Hello students, welcome to lecture 28 of the online course of Photonic Crystals Fundamentals and Applications. Today's lecture will be covering the overview of Bragg fibers in details. So, here is the lecture outline. We will first talk about the effect of core termination in Bragg fibers. We will discuss about the analysis of cylindrical fibers, band gaps of Bragg fibers and also the guided modes. So, let us first discuss about this uh, effect of core termination. So, we have discussed this earlier that the existence of the surface states depends on how we basically terminate the crystal. So, this was the point uh, at k a k z by a by 2 pi equals 1.7 where we found a surface state. Okay? So, the question comes you know uh, does the edge of the air core basically occurs at the edge of the holes or it basically cuts them in half. Okay? So, there could be possibility to improve the performance of the fiber by adjusting this termination that could eliminate the surface states. So, surface modes basically degrade a fiber's performance primarily because they may have greater loss than the other guided modes. So, here you can see there are two possible air core modes okay, that can be the guided modes. Okay. So, one example why you know uh, the guide surface modes would degrade the fibers performance the mainly because of the scattering that comes from the surface roughness which is much worse for a mode that is concentrated at the surface than the mode which is concentrated in the core. So, now we will see that you know if we try to change the core termination. So, this is an alternate core termination which is shown in this figure. So, here you can see this uh, air core is basically terminated not along the lines of the air holes, but it is slightly larger. So, the defect hole has been now enlarged to a radius of 1.4 a. So, in doing so, now you can see this, yeah, here it is like this. So, it is basically following the boundary of the air holes, but in this case, it actually cut opens all the air holes in the uh, periphery, right. So, perhaps counterintuitively, enlarging this defect has reduced the number of defect modes. So, if you do the band gap analysis for this particular fiber, you will see that you know there are only two modes appearing here. The surface mode does not appear in this case. Okay? And this is because the new termination is able to eliminate the surface states. Okay? In fact, there is only one doubly degenerate mode in this fiber core that is of the correct symmetry to couple to plane wave uh, input light as you can see in the uh, thick red line. Okay? So, you can also see this particular uh, mode profile that basically shows that the it is a beautiful uh, mode that is appearing only at the center of the air code. Right? So, so this will be a perfect uh, mode to guide your light signals because there is nothing close to the termination edges so that the scattering losses will be really low. So, indeed you can see that is it is even more uh, strongly localized than the previous structure. So, if you compare with the previous structure, okay, so as compared to this structure or uh, these two modes which were these two doubly degenerate modes, now you can see that here the localization is even actually better. Okay? And uh, this is because the lack of surface states to interact with. And uh, the thin blue line here basically indicates the other symmetry. So, the blue actually uh, shows non-degenerate and the green one shows doubly degenerate and this is another mode that will be able to sustain. Right? So, there are actually two blue lines which are uh, difficult to distinguish here. 
So what do we do here? We have shown the intensity patterns for k z a by 2 pi equals 1.6, okay, which are basically indicated by these two dots, okay. So the four higher order modes all have similar intensity pattern and a non-degenerate mode is basically shown here, okay. Next we move on to the Bragg fiber. So when we talk about Bragg fiber, so rather than using two dimensional uh, periodicity to make a uh, band gap fiber, here we basically use a one dimensional periodicity and simply wrap a multi-directional uh, film like this with around the core. So this particular structure is known as the Bragg fiber which has got a radius of R and you can see here you know alternating uh, dielectric material is basically forming this cladding right. So you can say that it is a one dimensionally periodic cladding of concentric layers. So the omnidimensional uh, regime is correlated with that of the strongest optical confinement. So here you can see the picture of an, um, it's an electron microscope image of a hollow core omnidirectional mirror uh, Bragg fiber, okay. So you can zoom this particular portion and it looks like this. So the two different colors shows two different refractive indices of the material being used, okay. So there are many alternating layers. You can look at the you know, bar here that will give you some idea about the scale of this particular structure. Like here the scale bar is 100 micron, here it is 1 micron and here it is 10 micron. So from here we zoomed into this part and then again we look into this particular thing in more details he over here, right. So break fibers uh, with layers made of low index polymer and high index chalcogenate glass, okay, have compatible thermal properties for drawing the fibers. So these are the two materials being used, okay, and such fibers can confine light within a hollow core, very much similar to the holy fibers. In fact, they have already been used to guide high power lasers for endoscopic surgery at wavelengths for which the solid materials are typically very lossy. Okay. So the thin white layers that you see over here are basically chalcogenate glass and the gray regions are basically the polymer. So this fiber is basically designed to operate at a wavelength of 10.6 micrometer. Right? So now we will do the analysis of cylindrical fibers. So to analyze the Bragg fiber, okay, you can actually take help of the rotational symmetry. So here you can see that you know um, the fiber axis can be marked. So this is x, this is y, and this is z. But then for a cylindrical fiber, you can also uh, use the cylindrical coordinate system. So this is r, this is the azimuthal angle phi, and this is your z. So it's rho phi z, or you can say r phi z. This axis also you can use. Okay. So here you can see that the con continuous translational symmetry is along the z. Okay, that means the Z dependence on the film uh, fields can be chosen as e to the power i k z z for some wave vector k z. By exactly the same reasoning, the continuous rotational symmetry in phi, which is the azimuthal angle, it means that the phi dependence of the fields can be chosen as e to the power i m phi for some number m which is basically known as the angular mode number, okay? Because for phi also you have a continuous rotational symmetry. It must be an integer because phi equals 0 and phi equals 2 pi are basically equivalent. So consequently you should be able to write e to the power i m 2 pi should be equal to 1, right? So the field of an eigenstate in that case can be written in the separable form, so h kzm can be written as e to the power i kzz plus im phi and then small kzm and this is the radial dependency, right? So this has been reduced to a one dimensional problem for the radial dependence of this, right? Because here it is a continuous translational and symmetry along z and continuous rotational symmetry along phi. 
So, the equation basically corresponds to a circularly polarized mode. Okay. Um, since by including the time dependence like e to the power i m t minus omega i time dependence e to the power i m phi minus omega t, we see that the field pattern at a fixed z is basically rotating with an angular phase velocity of omega by m where m is non-zero right yeah so the field of the eigenstate okay you can see um, that what happens that instead use a phi dependence of sin m phi or cosine m phi forming linearly polarized states that are not rotating okay so although the polarization is not generally uniform over the cross section so in this case what happens the mirror symmetry that is you know the phi can be replaced by minus phi it implies that you know plus minus m eigen modes are basically degenerate and one can therefore form e to the power plus i m phi plus minus e to the power minus i m phi combinations that can give you cosines and sines so as mentioned earlier m is basically called uh, angular momentum in analogy to the quantum mechanics where the angular momentum lz of such a wave function is basically h cross m okay and the equation for h k z m uh, which has radial dependency in a region of uniform refractive index would turn out to be analytically solvable in terms of Bessel's function. So, in a multi-layer fiber, the Bessel's uh, solution in each layer are then uh, connected by means of transfer matrix that match the boundary condition at each interface and you will be able to find out the solution for the entire uh, multi-layer uh, coating. Okay. Now, let us see how we calculate the band gaps of this Bragg fiber. So, in order to understand confinement in Bragg fiber, we should must solve for the band gaps of that fiber. So, this might seem at first like a difficult task because you know you have uh, concentric rings that are not uh, periodic structure in sense that is re required from the, for the block theorem because here the curvature basically decreases with r okay it means they would like to you now say flatten out when you uh, keep on increasing the radius but however all that matters for light is to be confined okay so that it cannot escape to r equal r tending to infinity so in this limit you know of r tending to infinity the curvature of the ring uh, would approximate 0 that means it will look like a planar multi-layer film which is shown here. So, if you study the band diagram for this one which you have already done previously. So, this band diagram of the flat multi-layer structure would give us an exact solution in the r tending to infinity limit. So, here as I mentioned this is basically you know high low high low different kind of uh, multi-layer film. So, this is a one dimensional periodic crystal and here it is the band structure that plots the normalized frequency versus normalized wave vector. So, here there are two parts you can see the on axis bands which are basically 0 0 k z. So, this is shown here on the left side and on the right side you are basically having the off axis band structure. So, it is for k y. So, you can see the marking here. So, this is x, this is y and vertically this is z. Okay. So, what is plotted here is basically um, as function of k y. Right. So, if you look carefully that for the on axis case the bands basically overlap that means they are degenerate. But uh, for the off axis case along k y the bands basically split into two different polarizations. So, you can see a blue color, red color, the red color tells you about T polarization but basically the polarization is along y z uh, plane and uh, the blue one shows uh, T m polarization where the field is along electric field is along x 
Okay. So, these are the different cases that you can see. Now, if the wave vector Kz and the frequency omega of a mode lie in one of the one dimensional gaps, that mode will not be able to escape to the large radii. So, it will be rather localized in the fiber core. So, for the multilayer film, uh, the optical confinement was obtained for quarter wave stack that you have seen earlier. So, if you consider a quarter wave stack here, okay, so the dense medium is the red color one and the uh, rarer medium is this light color one and this is basically the one dimensional multilayer film and this is a quarter wave stack. So, each uh, thickness of each um, layer is basically lambda by 4 and this is the medium in which the uh, light is incidenting. So, if you see carefully, this one is omega 1, sorry, epsilon 1, the permittivity for the dense medium is epsilon 2 and this is epsilon A, that is epsilon air. So, what you see here, it is basically plotted as a function of square root of epsilon 2 by epsilon 1 and here it is square root of epsilon 1 by epsilon A, right. So, this tells you about the size of the omnidirectional gap. So, these are basically different gap, mid gap ratios which are plotted for uh, this kind of a case which is shown here. So, silica, silicon silica in air, this kind of pattern will have a, you know, gap mid gap between you know 20 percent and 30 percent right over here right so i i hope it is clear that this particular figure what you see here the, the this this curvatures are basically showing you the gap mid gap frequency ratios right so this system tells you in which you know light is incident from an ambient medium of uh, permittivity epsilon a and you basically have two materials of uh, dielectric constant epsilon uh, 1 and epsilon 2 and we are considering epsilon 2 greater than epsilon 1 okay and it basically does not matter which uh, material forms the edge of the mirror okay so this pink shaded area is basically showing you the region in which there is a non zero omnidirectional gap so some common materials such as silicon, silica, air combination can also give you this kind of omnidirectional gap and you can see that has been marked over here. Okay. Now, what is the link of break fibers to this quarter, quarter wave stack? So, omnidirectional mirror is curved around a hollow sphere or cylinder. In that case, the conti continuous rotational symmetry can substitute for the translational symmetry and uh, using that light can be localized within the core. So, as with the uh, planar mirror, the leakage rate from the core to the exterior decreases exponentially with the number of layers. So, the cylindrical case which is called Bragg fiber by Ye et al and they published this uh, work in 1978. And the spherical uh, case was uh, dubbed as Bragg onion, which we briefly discussed in one of our previous lectures. That was done in uh, 2003 by Shu's group. Okay. So, here one did not require omnidirectional mirrors to obtain localized modes because a mode's rotational symmetry would impose restrictions on the angle that can escape into a large radii. Fine. So, with this, uh, you know, we could understand the comparison with the multilayer film that for multilayer film optical confinement was obtained for the case of quarter wave stack and this criteria must be modified in the case of Bragg fiber because waveguide modes will not be generally normally incident on the layers. In particular, when uh, you are guiding light in hollow core the low order modes will basically approach glancing incidents. It means the incident angle will be very large okay, as the core size will be increased. So, almost the rays will be parallel to the you know, uh, interface of the core and cladding. Okay. So, that way you can say that they approach the light line which is omega 
equal c k z. So, in this particular limit the quarter wave condition for the thickness of d 1 and d 2 of the material with indices n 1 and n 2 would become you know d 1 n 1 uh, tilde and d 2 n 2 tilde where n tilde is basically showing this which is you know n square minus c k z square by omega square. So, you can simplify it to square root of n square minus 1. Now, this formula uh, arises from the fact that the radial wave vector k r in n can be written as k r equals you know square root of n square omega by c whole square minus k z square and in that case the quarter wave condition would look like k r d that is d is the thickness will be equal to pi by 2 ok. So, if you consider this kind of you know um, refractive indices you can find out the corresponding uh, quarter wave frequency which is omega a by 2 pi c and it can be obtained as n 1 tilde plus n 2 tilde over 4 n 1 tilde n 2 tilde ok. So, what we have seen here that we must have n 1 n 2 greater than 1 in order to have you know uh, this, this parameter positive and that should also satisfy the glancing angle quarter wave condition with finite thickness layers. So, quarter wave thickness are not basically required in this case for guidance. The gap arise from any periodic layers, but they help us to optimize the confinement for a given index contrast. So, here you can see you know the projected band diagram which is plotted you know for frequency normalized frequency versus normalized wave factor ok and for uh, glancing angle quarter wave stack where the indices n 1 equals 1.6 and n 2 equals 2.7 that is similar to the polymer and chalcogenate indices. So, this is the same structure which has been um, you know modeled here and what we see? We see numerous band gaps here ok that um, shows that that are been shown up as open spaces. So, what are these colors representing that will come to, but here the yellow mark region shows the om omnidirectional band gap right. So, this is basically giving you omnidirectional reflection from an air medium and uh, that is where it is having a boundary with the black light line omega equals c k z. So, this particular line the black line that you see is basically the light line in air ok and this gives you the frequency range of omnidirectional reflection from air medium. So, omnidirectional property is not required for guidance in this kind of fiber as you can see that any gap at uh, the modes will actually do but its appearance is not a coincidence. So, for strong confinement we will generally want to have you know large contrast or uh, between the refractive indices and we will also want both the refractive indices to be greater than 1. So, that it satisfies the glancing angle quarter wave condition that we discussed before. So, here the regions um, show where the propagating modes exist. So, if you look into the color code you can see the blue color shows where the T m modes that is where the electric field is out of the incidence plane that exist for the red red ones are for um, you know uh, T. So, that is where the electric field lies uh, along the incidence plane and the purple color uh, is for both T m and T e. So, this actually tells you where the propagation modes basically exist in such a structure. So, these two criteria are precisely the ingredients for the omnidirectional reflection. So, additionally an omnidirectional gap has potential advantages when one wants to trap light incident from many different direction. So, it may seem that we are forgetting something important by considering only modes that are propagating in the RZ plane. So, you remember the RZ plane R is the radial vector and Z is that uh, the axis of the fiber ok. So, 
In fact, if you include the modes which are propagating out of this plane correspond to light traveling in the azimuthal direction, we will find no band gap at all. But fortunately, you know, such modes are basically excluded for any finite angular mode number m as when r tends to infinity, the corresponding azimuthal vector would basically tends to 0 because you can write k phi equals m by r. So, when r tends to infinity, this ratio will actually tend to 0. So, if you put it in another way, you can say that the conservation of angular momentum prevents a mode in the waveguide core from escaping into a mode that is traveling in the azimuthal direction infinitely far away. So, this conservation law makes gap and especially gaps at uh, kz near 0 which are much easier to create in Bragg fibers than in fibers that has got two dimensional periodicity something like the holy fibers which we have discussed in the previous lectures okay, and previous sections. So, on the other hand now holy fibers can be constructed from a single solid material something like you know silica whereas Bragg fibers would require two different solid materials um, to be found and that needs to be drawn together. Thus, there is a compatibility between those two material. Okay? So, that is why those polymer and chalcogenide glass makes a good combination. Now, we will look into the guided modes of Bragg fiber. So, given the multi-layer mirror with the parameters discussed, let us form a hollow core fiber by wrapping the mirror around a air core. So, this involves two important decision. What core radius r do we employ? And the second thing, how do we terminate the crystal? So, the choice of r generally involves a trade off between different loss mechanism. Okay? So, now simply we will choose r equals 3a, a is the periodicity. Okay. So, as for the termination, let us end the crystal at R with half of a high index layer and using a high index layer on the inner surface would confine modes in the core more strongly and using a half of a layer would eliminate the troublesome surface states that you have seen in the early beginning of the lecture today. So, the resulting band diagram okay, focusing on the first band gap above the light line you can see from here. So, this is basically a comparison. So, the first one is the band diagram of a hollow core here the core radius is 3 a okay, and this is the Bragg fiber where the two materials are taken as 2.7 and 1.6. So, this is typically the chalcogenate class and uh, the polymer. Okay. And here you can see the gray regions indicate the extended modes that propagate in this multilayer mirror. And if you compare this with the band diagram uh, uh, of a perfect uh, hollow perfect metal uh, waveguide. So, this is a solid metal. Okay and uh, or you can say it is a perfect metal making a hollow waveguide and if you compare the band diagram of this one with that, you can see that you know uh, here also you are able to see those extended modes that you are you have seen in the Bragg mirror case. So, you can actually try to compare these two things and here the modes are also leveled by polarization and uh, angular mode numbers. So, you can see some kind of uh, mode numbering shown here. So, we will go into more details. So, what you see here that as the um, core is basically several wavelength in diameter, a number of modes are basically supported. right? So, it becomes a multi mode. So, it turns out that this modes can be directly related to the modes of a much simpler waveguide which is a uh, hollow perfect metal cylinder. So, the modes basically correlate. So, the band diagram of a hollow metallic uh, waveguide with the same 
r equals 3 a can have the Bragg mirror gap superimposed. Okay? So, you can actually superimpose this for uh, comparison and by comparing uh, the two band diagrams, we can see that there is one to one correspondence between the modes and the modes of the Bragg fiber are essentially given by the metallic modes that fall within the band gap. Okay? So, what is this hollow uh, perfect metal waveguide? This is basically a mirror wrapped around a hollow core. So, the metal perfect metal will also behave like a mirror, right? So, it is like basically having the same functionality. So, with this thing in mind, it is perfect not surprising to see that the mode structure of this case and the Bragg fiber is very, very similar at least for large R uh, or in the, you know, omnidirectional regime where the multilayer mirror would act basically like a perfect metal to reflect all the uh, modes. So, both structures have modes described by the angular um, index m uh, which you can see here, but a metallic waveguide with a homogeneous interior has an additional special property that you can see that all modes are basically divided into two polarization states. However, T m and T e polarization or T m and T uh, the terms which are used in fiber literature you know carry a slightly different meaning. So, here let us use the lower cases to distinguish the meanings, the different meanings they convey. So, let us use small t e Okay. So, it tells you that the modes are having electric fields purely in the x y direction. So, you can take this plane as x y and the vertical dimension as z. Okay. But the magnetic field may be in any dimension direction in the case of T. If you take T m here the modes with magnetic fields purely in the x y plane, but electric fields can be in any direction. The modes of the cylindrical metallic waveguide okay, can then be leveled as T e m l and T m m l where m is the angular index and l is telling you about the radial order. So, it can be 1, 2, 3 dot dot dot. Okay. So, here you can see that the lowest frequency mode in the case of the metallic one is T e 1 1 and then you have T m 0 1, T e 2 1, then you have uh, T e 0 1, T m 1 1, those are very close to each other that is why they are shown here separately. Then you have T 3 1, T sorry and T m 2 1 and so on. So, of course, any m not equal to 0 mode is doubly degenerate with a minus m mode. So, you know, you can uh, think of you know that t 0 1 and uh, t m 1 1 happen to be exactly degenerate. Now, only the m equal to 0 modes remain pu purely polarized as a consequence of the mirror symmetry in phi the t 0 l modes will have their electric fields purely in the phi direction and you can say that the tm 0 l modes will have electric fields purely in the r z plane. So, all of the m not equal 0 modes however, are changed from t and t m into a hybrid polarization which can be leveled as h e and e h depending on whether they are mostly t e like or t m like. So, h e means they are mostly like these are hybrid, but mostly like T e and you know the other one tells you that this is also hybrid, but mostly like T m. So, for example, the T e 1 1 mode of the metal waveguide will become you know the H e 1 1 mode of the brake fiber okay, and so on. So, this is how you know in the fiber when you go to the hollow core fiber, this is how the modes will be mapped. So, it turns out that the most important two modes for many practical applications are 
T uh, sorry H E 1 1 and T 0 1 ok. You can actually go back to the figure and correlate this. So, T 0 1 is basically the one with the lowest loss in the case of both you know uh, metallic fiber and BRAC fiber and HE11 is usually the lowest loss M equals 1 mode and uh, the only M that can directly couple to uh, plane wave input light. Okay. There you can also see from here that the field intensity uh, patterns are shown. Okay, So, you can see that they basically closely resemble the metallic waveguide modes. So, they are basically the modes in hollow core BRAC fiber at quarter wave frequency. So, these are the two guided modes. So, the first one shows T01, this one is HE11, okay. And um, the color bar here shows the power intensity, okay. And the transverse that is XY electric field pattern are basically shown as green arrows in both the plots right so looking at these modes we can classify the modes propagating in a multi layer structure by whether the electric field is parallel okay to the plane of propagation or it is perpendicular to the plane of propagation so you can actually call whether it is t or tm okay so here we can do the same thing for m equals 0 uh, because in this case rz is basically a mirror plane for every phi but what happens here the leveling convention is basically reversed. So, the plane of propagation okay, far away is basically the rz plane. Okay, so, you can think of uh, r this way z is going into the screen. So, you can think of a rz plane. So, now electric field can be parallel to that rz plane which we are calling as tm0l and electric field can be perpendicular to the rz plane which we are now calling as t 0 l ok. So, this one. So, the t band gap which was previously um, the t m band gap or the s polarized one is usually larger than the t m gap but because the later one closes entirely at the Brewster's angle that you can also see from here. So, as a consequence, um, every mode except for the T0L mode is generally limited by the smaller Tn gap. Okay? So, you can actually see in the figures. So, the T0L mode on the other hand can have both larger bandwidth and stronger confinement because they see only the larger T gap. So, partly as a consequence of this, the T mode would have the lowest predicted loss for sufficiently large R. R is basically the core radius. An analogous result is uh, well known for the cylindrical metallic waveguide, although that comes from a very different region. So, for the case of a metallic waveguide, the boundary condition at R equals capital R is that the E z and E phi must be 0 while E r can be non-zero and in that case the T E 0 L modes for which E r equals 0 everywhere okay, are the only modes that could have you know the vector E to be equal to 0 when you reach the boundary or you are exactly at the metal. So, for an imperfect metal the so, th those were considering the perfect metals. So, if you consider imperfect metal, there will be field penetration into region into the metal as well. So, you can also see region which are greater than uh, field will be there in the region R greater than equals capital R and that would cause ohmic loss. Okay? So, the T01 mode uh, will have the smallest penetration into the metal since uh, its electric field are nearly 0 at the interface and that is why this particular mode will also have the uh, lowest ohmic loss. So, in fact, a uh, smaller field node 
at r equals capital R uh, is apparent from you know uh, the Bragg fiber T01 mode that you can see in the figure that here at the, at the boundary it is almost 0 ok and uh, that means you know this particular mode is showing a very close resemblance to the metallic waveguide. So, with that we will conclude this lecture. So, we will be discussing about the losses in hollow core fiber in the next lecture. If you have got any query regarding this one, you can uh, drop an email to this email address mentioning MOOC Photonic Crystals and the lecture number on the subject line. Thank you. Thank you.